Hello guys. It is blazing out here. Lord have mercy. It is hot. You hear me? Hot and a scorcher. Man. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to talk about a couple things, but you know, um, one of the uh, biggest things that I'm learning <clears throat> when it comes to this lifetime, man, is we have to be mindful that we misconstrue how we love, <laughs> right? What is our love rooted in, man? Are we really sure? Are we really Are we really being mindful of how we are loving? Is our love rooted in love or is our love rooted in fear? You got to think about that. Remember I told you, I think it was yesterday, I told you guys that I'm getting a whole lot of spiritual downloads. So right now I'm just wanting to drop this one for you. We as parents, we as lovers, we as family, we as friends, we spend a lot of time saying we love you. I love you. I love you, baby. I love you. Son, I love you. Daughter, I love you. Sister, I love you. Friend, I love you. But a lot of times, I don't think we're loving properly. Yes, we're loving. We are trying our hardest to love properly. But I don't think we're doing it right. <laughs> and a lot of times, I don't think... It's not our fault, man. Nobody really showed us how to love. You know, how do you teach someone to love, right? How do we teach someone to love properly? How do we teach someone to love authentically? How do we teach someone to love and have it rooted in love and not rooted in fear? You hear what I'm saying? How do we love without it being rooted in fear? Man, it's awful. I mean, I don't think we really truly sit down and think about it. But a lot of times, we're loving our husbands, our wives, our kids, our friends, our siblings. Hey, Carolyn. Our friends, our siblings. In fear. We're afraid, man. And why I say we fear is I want you to think about something. When we find that somebody may come in and take someone from us be it as it may we can use our kids for example because i don't always want to make it about relationships because you know it can get overwhelming i mean i could be bringing up friendships all the i mean relationships up all the time but i want to talk about parenting for a minute Whew. so let's say for instance we have a kid oh thanks Wendell. that's a compliment babe but I'm nowhere near as beautiful as her. But let's say, for instance, being rooted in the love for our children, right? And our kids get involved with a friend or our kids find a substitute parent, like somebody else that they are connected to that loves them like their own child. Do we get jealous and rooted and, and upset? Do we get feeling some type of way like... Well, you're my baby girl or you're my baby son you don't have a right to be somebody else's kid i'm the mama i brought you in the world <laughs> just as an example or we can or we can feel some type of way about our sister having a bestie that seems to be getting along way better than her and i do because i have a, a sister that maybe her and i don't see eye to eye a lot of times and so she's got this best friend that just gets her and we feel some type of way like what the hell that's my sister that's my that's my family you don't get to come in and just start caring about my sister and, and treating her 
like she's your sister because that's my sister, right? Or we're in a love affair and we love somebody to the hundredth power and someone comes in and they begin to get along better. They begin to come in and all up in the space with your relationship. And you're like, what's this? You know, this is my relationship. How dare you come in and, and that's my man or that's my woman. Who are you to come in and try to take over and blase, 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 blase. Right? And we get real frustrated. Right? But are we loving rooted in love or are we loving rooted in fear you know i had a spiritual download yesterday and it's been pondering on me all day today we have to think about how we're loving someone else but first of all before we can love someone else damn it we got to learn how to love ourselves. are we loving ourselves? properly <laughs> are we are we really loving ourselves properly are we loving ourselves in love because how we're loving our mate how we're loving our kids how we're loving our family and sisters and friends and all that is rooted in fear man we're not loving properly and i challenge everybody because i think it's important that we start to really sit down and look at how we're loving oh you know, being a wisdom coach isn't easy because I see a lot of stuff outside of what maybe the mainstream people see. And I understand that we try. We try to love and yet we don't really know what the hell we're doing. Who really showed us how to love? I mean, we, sh we know how to show affection, right? Our moms or our dads gave us hugs, love, kisses. So we know how to do that. That's affection. That's not love, though. And I think we misconstrue that hugging and kissing means that we're loving. No, hugging and kissing is a physical form of showing affection. It can portray that you are loving the person, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are. So... Just ask the playboys or the playgirls. They can tell you. If I love on you and I give you enough hugs and kisses, you're going to think I love you. And I really don't. So I think it's important that we understand there's a difference between affection and love. But before I talk about that, we have to be mindful that whatever we fear in our life, we need to face it. Like I said earlier, we have a tendency to feel some type of way if somebody is coming in our space or coming in the dynamic that we're used to having and can kind of shake up things a little bit. And you're looking like, where the hell did you come from? My relationship was just fine until you showed up. And that could be in your, that could be in your parenting relationship. That could be in your lover relationship. Hell, that could be in your familial relationship with your family, with your mama, with your daddy, whatever. And you can be like, everything was cool until you showed up. But was it? See, I think a lot of times we don't face our fears. We don't. And I think it's vitally imper imperative when we're afraid of something that we face it before it happens. I tell my clients this all the time. I tell my couples this. I tell my, my, my singles this. I tell my, you know, you know the people that I'm one-on-one -on -one having sessions with all the time. Hey, you got a fear? You need to face it now. And then think in your mind on how to resolve the fear and dissolve it so you don't have to keep rehashing it. See, fear, what happens is, fear is an unseen energy that we cast off in the universe we fear something can happen we fear something can happen and so when we have that greatest fear we actually cast off that energy into the universe and we may not be doing it because we believe that 
the fear is going to come but we're doing it because we have a fear of it you know prime example my son had an issue with going in our basement and, and, and doing our laundry for the longest time I had him going into meditation classes with me I talked to him about fear of the dark and stuff like that he's 11 so you know he was going through his own challenge with fear and I told him I said nothing in this house son can spiritually shake you because first of all you're a god in your own right you have your own spiritual growth and you have your own spiritual presence understand something there's no entity that can shake you as long as you know that you're a god in your own right so there's no reason to fear your home to fear the basement to fear the attic to fear anywhere this is your home so you take precedence over your home you have a fear you're taking marley downstairs every time you get every chance you get you're hollering for marley to go down in the basement marley don't have to go with you what is marley gonna do i said so i need you to learn to face that fear and understand something once you face it going down in the basement is no longer a fear because you're now understanding hey i'm above this but well, that applies to everybody on here we have a tendency to get nervous or worried or concerned about man i don't know if i could do this i'm worried that my wife's going to cheat on me i'm worried that my kid's going to get pregnant i'm scared that my job i'm going to lose my job you can't have those worries and think that you're not casting off unseen energy into the universe to where the universe is going to respond because the root the 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 universe is is not prejudice <laughs> your energy is going to cast back whatever it is you feel so whether you understand that or not it's very important you understand that mental thoughts is energy and power so as long as you stay rooted in fear things can't get done you, you it'll choke the life out of your movement of your growth of what you're trying to do you can't have peace if you're fearful I have a baby girl man she's 20 got my baby grandson she's in a relationship she goes and does and goes to work comes home takes the baby here takes the baby there if I stay rooted in worry I will be a mess is she okay did she buckle the baby in did she buckle herself in is she okay is she okay is she okay that's too much see we talk about faith all the time right well give it to God walk by faith but we really don't do it unless you know it's told to us or or we hear about it but you gotta walk by faith all the time 24 7 it has to be a practice walking by faith is by practice <laughs> prime example like i said my daughter has my baby grandson driving around you know what i'm saying she goes to work goes home i can be constantly worried about where she's at what's she doing she go okay oh my god i'm worried you can't live and worry man and if my faith isn't consistent then i'm out here handing everybody out you know just crazy tickets that really aren't they can't take to cash I have to be willing to understand that you know what I have to have faith my baby girl will be just fine I have to be I have to be faithful that my my son will be just fine I can't walk in, in fear all the time and whatever my fear is I have to learn to face it in the event something happens face that fear and then walk myself through what will be my resolution to the fear because we can't live a life of worry, live a life of anxiety, constantly concerned about what we can't control. Some things we can't control, no matter what we do. We just can't. And that's just what it is. That's just life. So I want you guys to understand, if you face it, if you fear it, you gotta face it. If you have a fear that you, that's 
ripping the life out of your relationship, your marriage, your in intentional relationship with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Face the fear. You afraid that they're going to leave you? You're afraid they're going to cheat on you? You're afraid they're going to find someone else? Face that fear now. Because what happens is when you face the fear, it take it dissipates all that energy you're casting into the universe of what you're fearful of. This is why it's so important to walk by faith. Because we can't we can't live thinking that someone is going to not disappoint us. It's going to happen. We're going to get disappointed. We're going to get frustrated. We're going to get hurt. We're going to get angry with our children, with our cousins, family, sisters, brothers. We're going to get angry and hurt, disappointed by our, you know, our co-workers, all that stuff. You can't walk in this lifetime and think that nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody's going to make you frustrated. It's just what it is. But in that, are you willing to forgive it is the question. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you're condoning it, but it means you're willing to overlook it and you're willing to let it go. That's what forgiveness is. This is why it's so imperative that when you have a fear, you face it head on and step up to it and let it know whatever that fear is. I'm not afraid of you. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's something that I fear in my home, something I fear in my relationship, in my parental guidance, it, whatever. I don't want it to take charge of my mental state and my peace. But it will when you don't stay rooted in love for yourself and in love for the person that you're concerned with or in fear of losing. A lot of times we fear we're going to lose somebody. And normally that's all in the mind, man. The mind. Do you know how dope the mind is? We can, we can change our mind in an instant. Just by our patterns of choices. Just by our patterns of change. Just by our discipline. Just by our will. We can change our mind. It's deep, isn't it? But we can. We can change it. So, with that said, we have to be willing to sit back and say, Okay, I have a fear of this. So, let me go ahead and face it. Right? Let me go ahead and face this. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back on this and say, Okay, I have a fear that I'm going to lose my mate because of cheating or because there's somebody else or whatever we gotta sit in that you gotta get rooted in that fear and then really dive into the essence of that and then ask yourself why am I afraid what am I afraid of and then make yourself bigger than you are step up remember how people when we were young at least before the cyberbullying we were young in the 70s and 80s Man, our parents would make us go back out there and face your bully. Do what? Face your bully. You're scared to death. You coming in here screaming and hollering and holding on to my leg. No, you get off my leg and take your little buns out there and face your bully. Because I can't be here for you always. So at the end of the day, you got to learn to face your bullies. Well, your fears are bullies. Understand that. Fears are bullies. That's what they are. <laughs> I'm just saying. So if you're afraid of bullies, you got to go out there and face them. And tell them, I'm not scared of you. There's nothing you can do to me. You might have something to say. You might punch me. Whatever. But at the end of the day, I will get up and I'll swing. I will swing again and I will swing worse. A problem is, we don't want to be honest about our fears because we want to pump up ourselves and in our ego that we fear nothing but we fear a lot we fear a lot don't we we fear losing our kids we fear losing our parents we fear losing our job we fear losing our family we fear losing our our harmony and our relationship and i can go on and on and on about how much we fear but we got to take charge in understanding that hey 
regardless of what I fear, what can I do right now to challenge my fear and to uphold myself and get rooted in being fearless? See, you know me. You guys know me. You guys are my regulars, man. You know. I don't mess around when it comes to fearing something. And we can all be fearful. I've had moments of fear. I've had, you know, challenges in life. All of that. Nothing. I'm not I'm not exempt. You think because I'm on here talking to you guys and coaching you and being a coach, a wisdom coach, and helping couples and all that, you think that I don't have fears? Absolutely. But I had to learn that in my fears, I must face them. And some of the hardest fears that I've had to face was those that... I decided ahead of time okay you know for instance like parenting my daughter when she was about 13 man I was like what am I gonna do this is my baby this is my baby girl you feel what I'm saying this is my baby girl you know what I mean how am I gonna let her go how am I gonna do this and how am I gonna do this with grace how am I going to do this without feeling like I lost everything when she walks out that door and decides to be independent of me, even though I'm encouraging it? <laughs> that's, that's the crazy part about it. I'm encouraging her to be independent, but at the end of the day, I fear her independence. So how am I supposed to get rooted in this fear?